Hi, it's Louise from Spiral Bright Insight. I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer and I want to talk today about the next lunation, which is the Capricorn full moon. Now, what I do in these videos is try and pull out some of the stronger themes, um, certainly that are speaking to me through each astrological event. I also bring in some numerology and also add in the fixed stars and galactic and cosmic energies and influences to try and... Um, sort of give us a feel for the energies that we are navigating and some of the themes that might be coming up for us to work with. So as with everything in astrology in particular, there are so many different ways of interpreting the same energy. And this is partly why I love astrology so much because you really can um, sort of feel into what the different planets and the signs and the placements are trying to tell us but everybody will have a different filter and slightly different perspective so what I want to do really is bring through the kind of themes that are coming through strongly for me when I look at this chart and when I feel into the energies and hopefully you're going to resonate with some of it at least some of it if not all of it so without any further ado, um, the full moon is actually on either the 21st or the 22nd of June this year, depending on where you are in the world. For us in the UK, it's the early hours of the 22nd. And the full moon occurs when the sun and the moon come into a complete oppositional placement on the chart. So the sun is at one degree, seven minutes of cancer, and the moon in total um, opposition will be at one degree, seven minutes of Capricorn. So this is a Capricorn full moon. Now, it's particularly interesting because in the lunar cycle, the next full moon is also going to be in Capricorn. So this full moon is taking place at the beginning of the sign. The next one in July is going to be at 29 degrees. So the final degree point of Capricorn. So we have like a double whammy of this Capricorn energy. There is definitely something that we are meant to really work with and learn from and integrate when it comes to the Capricorn energy, both in our personal charts and at a collective level. So it's particularly potent because it is happening the day after solstice, which is when the sun moves into the cardinal water sign of cancer. And this for us in the northern hemisphere is the day of the point in the year. It's halfway through the year, the midpoint, and it is the day when we have the most light. The sun is at its highest point in the sky. And you know, at solstice, it is very much a time when everything stands still. It is a pause point in the year. It's a time to reflect, to really think about what we are grateful for and to really set the intentions for what is to come. So we have this solstice energy already very much still at play when the moon reaches um, its peak lunation the following day. So this is we are very much in a time of a new cycle because the sun in cancer which is also on the world axis is setting the scene for what is to come over the next six months or certainly the next three months until the autumn equinox the fact that the lunation is taking place at one degree of capricorn and um, which is the very beginning of capricorn is also very much about sort of a new start and the number one in numerology is the first number in the cycle so this is about initiation it's about new beginnings it's about leadership and sort of stepping forth out into something new so whereas whenever we have a full moon it's the end of the lunar cycle there's always an element of completion of release of endings and letting go with this full moon in particular the focus seems to be more on starting something or certainly looking at and um, getting something going and it feels like when the moon gets to 29 degrees at the next um full moon in july that is really going to bring about some quite um, significant energies of endings and release and completion. So we have this sort of 28, 29 day period ahead of us where we're working with the Capricorn energy 
but we're not quite ready to let go. There's still some lessons to be learnt along the way during this time. So what I'll do is I'm going to talk about the Capricorn energy and what that brings through. And then I will bring in some of the fixed star and galactic alignments. So the Capricorn energy, this is cardinal earth. So again, you've got cardinal energy, which is all about setting something in motion. It's about a new start. It's very action driven very motivated and Capricorn itself is an incredibly motivated driven energy. Now Capricorn is represented by the sea goat which is a mythical creature which is said to have the body of a goat and the tail of a fish so it could this creature could um, sort of survive and navigate all different types of land and sea but for me when I think of Capricorn I always think of the goat element and the goat climbing the mountain. Now this sign and um, and Capricorn in general is incredibly determined. It's all about perseverance, tenacity, resilience, very highly motivated. With Capricorn energy, Capricorn sits at the top of the chart um, in traditional astrology because it rules the 10th house or it is the 10th sign. So when we think about the 10th house in Capricorn, we are thinking about where you are showing up in the world. This is often linked to your um, your public role, your image, your reputation, your status. It is about being seen. It's about putting yourself out there. We have on the opposite side of the chart in the opposition, we have cancer. So cancer is very much about sort of coming within, finding that inner sanctuary, that inner sanctum, what it is that makes you feel safe, what you need to make you feel nurtured and nourished. So we're working with this of oppositional energy on the axis of security. And in particular, with cancer being our inner world, our inner emotional world and our inner um, state of being, whereas opposing Capricorn, which is more about um, what we are working up towards and how we want to sort of make our mark on the world and show up and actually take responsibility for ourselves. So Capricorn is about hard work. It's very much about success. If you think about the goat on the mountain, you know, the goat cannot see the summit. It cannot see the top. It cannot see where it's going, but it knows that it wants to reach the top no matter what. And the goat is able to negotiate some quite challenging terrain. And that feels very metaphorical for the kind of journey and the path that we are on in this ascension process, because, you know, for, well, for all of us, none of us can really see where we are going and what it's going to look like. We can imagine um, and, you know, we can have a good idea and we know what we would like it to look like, but we don't actually know what the real picture is going to be when we ascend and when we reach um, sort of, you know, where we're heading. And um, but we have this innate faith, this built in sort of compass that is just pushing us to have that sort of um, determination to carry on, to keep on going, regardless of how challenging it gets, regardless of how many times you might get knocked down or maybe think, gosh, is it even worth it? Capricorn is very much about keeping going um, and just pushing through, keeping aiming aiming for the top, you know, and knowing that, yes, it's going to take a lot of work, it's going to take a lot of effort, but always being prepared to put that effort in. So, you know, it is very much a time, particularly as we have just had the solstice, to really sort of sit and look at how far you have come personally and how far we have come collectively. You know, a time to really appreciate, you know, the effort that we are all putting in and that we have put in and, you know, what we have achieved because Capricorn also is about achievement. So, um, you know, the fact that we are we're keeping going against all the odds, but we just know that it is going to be worth it. That is very much Capricorn energy. So Capricorn gives us discipline. It gives us structure and um, it gives us energy of the wise elder. Capricorn is very much about maturity and mastery. So again, you know, it's acknowledging that we are on this journey and we are having to climb high and far and it is not easy at all. Capricorn is not going to make it easy, but the results and the rewards will be worth it if you keep on going. So that's very much the message 
that the moon wants to tell us through this chart. Um, Capricorn is about integrity as well, so it's staying true to yourself, to what you believe in, to who you are, and using that wisdom that you have gained along the way, even though you may, may not feel that you've achieved very much yet, you know, what the part of the um, gold is in the journey and the experiences that you pick up by being on that journey and on that path. So again, it's a beautiful time to really reflect on everything that you have sort of achieved and everything that you've been managed to do so far. So Capricorn is very much a coming of age, but we have to also recognize that although, you know, we may be nearing the end goal and hopefully we are because you know we all kind of have an idea of where we want to get to and what why we're here and what we're trying to achieve certainly at a collective level so you know we are getting close to the summit to the goal to the success that we so desperately want to have but it's also being able to acknowledge that we cannot get to the top and have that success if we um, disconnect from who we are and from where we've come from, which is the cancer side of this axis. So every full moon and pretty much all of astrology is about balancing out the two opposing signs or energies. It is about bringing back to that midpoint and being able to integrate both similarly oppositional and very um, polarised energies in order so that we can come into balance and harmony. So again, with this full moon, we are very much working on our inner emotional world and acknowledging that and recognising that and what it is we need to feel safe, but also bringing in the Capricorn energy as well and acknowledging that, you know, it is time to really start to shine and put ourselves out there and start to use the gifts that we have brought in. But if we are going to um, at any point be disconnected or turn our back or reject where we've come from and who we are and our roots and all that work and all that foundational work that we have done, then that's when we can become out of balance. So this is about really being able to integrate both sides of the axis, both the, Car the Capricorn and the Cancer energy. So Saturn is the ruling planet of this lunation. Saturn is in Pisces still. So this brings a really sort of strong element of karma into this into this full moon. There are lessons that we need to learn. And in Pisces, this is very much about letting go of perhaps what we have clung on to or what we've held on to that has kept us maybe feeling quite safe, quite structured, um, but also hemmed in and restricted in many ways. So this is about breaking out of that um, sense of structure that no longer serves us. And Pisces is very much supporting that. Now, as Capricorn is at the top of the chart, I always sort of see it as, you know, it is almost the closest sign to our spiritual selves. When you get round to Pisces, you are stepping into the void, into the soul energy. But Capricorn very much forms a bridge between the spiritual and the physical, between spirit and matter. And so this is about being able to bring down the more spiritual aspects and that spiritual connection and the connection to our higher selves and even, you know, to our guides, to our galactic origins and our galactic um, supporters and star beings that are out there willing us on. It's about bringing those energies down into the physical. So again, so we can start to integrate. So we can start to acknowledge and recognize that, you know, yes, we are human beings having a 3D sort of dense physical experience, but we are so much more than that as well. And it is about making that connection bringing the spirit down into the physical and recognizing the value of both because the, the only way we make this ascension happen is by grounding and earthing in the energies that will help us to rise but we need to acknowledge that there is this is a very physical role which is why we are incarnated 
in the human bodies at this time. Now, just looking at the rest of the chart, we've got really strong water energy because Cancer, um, obviously, is home to the sun at this time. We also have Venus and Mercury in Cancer, and we have Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. So when the strong water energy, this is very much sort of inviting us into a state of being which is more aligned with flow. Water is very feminine energy. It is very um, linked to intuition, to empathy, to a more spiritual way of looking at the world, um, very emotional energy. It is linked to cleansing and clearing. So where we're bringing up a lot of toxicity and density is rising up to the surface, this water energy is really going to assist us by cleansing and clearing it all away. When we're working with water, we may feel more compassionate for ourselves and for everybody else. And um, we are possibly feeling more softer, able to receive more. This is very much about surrendering and letting go and allowing, you know, don't even think about resisting the change at this time is basically the message because, you know, the water is really going to support us in just allowing and going with the flow and stepping into a more feminine way of being. The sun and the moon create a T-square with Neptune. Now this is an out of sign aspect because Neptune is in Pisces at the 29 degree, the anoretic degree, the final degree of the zodiac and the sun and the moon are the cardinal signs of Capricorn and Cancer but the orb is close enough for it to be a really strong aspect and therefore very influential. So that Neptune in Pisces at the very last degree of the zodiac is very much asking us just to let go. You know, it is very much a time of endings from the point of view of Neptune. So, you know, and again with Pisces, very strong, very karmic energy, very much about letting go, moving on, being able to release ourselves from systems, structures, ways of being through Capricorn that we have been very attached to, that have served as well, but that are no longer working. They're no longer serving our highest and greatest good. So as P Pisces is this beautiful water sign, it feels that rather than the endings being dramatic and quite... Um, you know, creating a huge upheaval, I have this sense that they are just going to dissolve, almost cease to be in, in a lot of ways. So, you know, and it might not even be noticeable. In some ways it is, and it's very unsettling and everything's changing. But with this particular full moon, with the the T-square, you know, yes, we're, we are absolutely being pushed to let go of stuff, but it can be soft, you know, if we allow it and we just surrender to it, it is almost as if everything just melts away and we'll suddenly look around and just think, oh, actually, you know, I hadn't even noticed that that sort of thing had ceased to be an issue for me or that person, you know, that I'm not, they're not even in my, on my radar anymore, that, that sort of um realisation. So again, you know, it doesn't have to be, really hard work if you bring in the more sort of water energy into this T-square, which of course there is stronger water because Pisces and Cancer are both water signs which are um, working with the Capricorn Earth Moon. So Neptune in Pisces is very much about um, illusion, it's about the void, it's about stepping into sort of a unity consciousness um, stepping away from structures and what we have always known. But because this is an out of sign T-square, it doesn't feel as harsh as it could perhaps be. So again, you know, it's much softer, it's much gentle as I've just explained. But it's also going to give us the ability to really start to visualise what it is that we want to bring in and what is needed to create this new earth that we are all sort of waiting to welcome in. Now, this T-square is going to be much stronger um, and even more activating at the next full moon because Neptune will still be at 29 degrees of Pisces and the sun and the moon will also be at 29 degrees. So again, you know, we're starting something off here which is going to build and almost meet its crescendo at the next full moon in July. So that's just something to be aware of. 
Now that is pretty much um, it for the sort of traditional astrology chart. I want to turn our attention now to the galactic chart because there is a lot more going on through the fixed star energies. Um, the sun at 29, sorry, the sun at one degree of Cancer is in an out of sign conjunction with Betelgeuse in which is a fixed star in the Orion constellation and I talked about this star in my Orion Stargate video which you might wish to go and check out but you know this the sun is very much shining a light and empowering the energy of Betelgeuse which is the star um, that you know when we think about Orion as a collective group of stars, this is bringing a light and attention on themes of polarity. But Betelgeuse in particular sits at the um, right hand shoulder of Orion, the hunter or the left hand shoulder as we look at it from Earth. So, you know, this star is very much linked to success. It's also got associations with the military and with leadership. Um, shoulders to me sort of bear burdens and you know it's where you hold on to a lot of um, you know stuff that you're having to carry so perhaps you know this is going to shine a light on where we are carrying um, stuff emotions responsibilities ideas that are no longer serving us and that they're weighing us down and they need to be released so that is one way of looking at it but it also um, Betelgeuse is brings our attention to the fact that everything in our world, in our universe, in our lives, our personal lives and our collective lives, everything is a circle. Everything is cyclical in nature. So, you know, part of the process of being human or, or even at a soul level is about sort of working through a cycle where something is reborn and then it gets to the end of its life, however long that takes and we have to let go in order to bring in the new. So Betelgeuse really helps us to understand that. The energy of this star, you know, is really um, encouraging us to get to grips with the idea that we cannot die, that our soul and our energy is eternal. So again, you know, this gives a real sort of um, boost of faith and understanding, but it also helps to release the fear. And it's accepting that some things just are always going to come to an end point because that is how nature works and so you know if things are ending if things are being removed and released from your life it is part of a natural cycle and Betelgeuse really helps us to understand that and to accept it as well and also to be able to integrate that truth so this star is going to help us to understand the purpose of this recycling of karma of rebirth and death and also help us to release fear from the whole process. Betelgeuse also is going to help us to activate our root chakra as long with the higher chakras. So really helping us to connect the energies between the above and below and to help us to work with those energies and integrate them and create the cycle of energy and the flow that needs to happen between the two. Which again, it makes me, you know, come back to sort of that axis of Capricorn at the top of the chart with Cancer at the bottom, bringing sort of fusing and blending the, the higher energy with the lower energy, the earth energy with the spiritual, which again is enhanced very much by the fact that we are working with this eight energy in 2024, which is about the cycle, um, a continuous loop, you know, the eternity symbol as above as below, having a foot in two different camps, being able to integrate and blend and balance those energies out because that is very much key work for us all this year. So this full moon is playing a huge part in that energy, in that task in those themes and helping us really to work with them. Now, of course, the moon in opposition to the sun is working with the Betelgeuse energy as well. More from the more physical side, the root chakra. But the moon herself is conjunct the galactic center 
in a slightly wider orb, galactic centre being at 27 degrees of Sagittarius. But again, this is helping us to sort of go further, to connect to higher consciousness and wisdom that is coming from out there in the cosmos. This is very much divine energy, divine understanding and wisdom, which is pushing us further than we believe perhaps we can go. It's about accessing um, activations, light codes and higher frequencies that are really supporting this process that we are in. The moon is also in a trine to Andromedan star Mirac or Mirach. And this is really, really beautiful because Andromeda is very much a frequency of freedom, non-attachment, transformation and being able to adapt to an ever-changing landscape. This star brings in themes of creativity, but also the ability to really tune into and hear the beat of the earth, the frequency of the earth and all of the living beings around us. So, you know, it is my feeling with this trine, which is very harmonious, very supportive. It's my feeling that we're going to really have this opportunity to tune in and to feel into what is going on. So rather than focusing on the mind and what we're seeing and what we're hearing, it is about coming into our bodies and being able to feel the truth of a situation. And, you know, it is often through feeling where we are able to um, get a much deeper understanding because it is easy to be tricked um, or exploited by what we are being shown or what we are seeing. But when we feel into something, we will know whether it is real or not for us. And it also, you know, really invites us to feel into and tune into the frequency of Earth and start to realise, I know a lot of us already do, but really start to get the idea and understand that she is a living being as well and that she has a consciousness. So again, starting to really connect to her consciousness at a much deeper level. The moon's also in a trine to Regulus, which is one of the royal stars, much, um, very much associated with Archangel Raphael. So again, this is beautiful healing energy coming through to support us at this time. Um, Regulus is very much about courage and heart consciousness. It's the heart of the lion in the Leo constellation. So, you know, this is about calling on our courage, but also having um, the time and the opportunity to start to play and to have fun and to sort of reclaim our inner child as well. And that sort of um, much more lightness of being. So seeing things and understanding things from a heart based um, consciousness is really important. But, you know, this is really beautiful energy sort of helping us to rise above and see things from a much um, higher perspective, but a much more loving and healing one as well. And the moon is also squared to the supergalactic center, which is sort of the grandmother energy um, compared to the mother energy of the galactic center. So this is a cosmic point. It serves as a black hole. So it's very much stretching and very magnetic energy, pulling us out of where we have be perhaps become sort of set and fixed stretching our awareness stretching our mind stretching the potential of what you know we can do what we can conceive what we can visualize taking us beyond but also as this is black hole energy there can be very sudden changes which literally happen you know in a heartbeat um, because you don't always know where you are with black hole energy. So um, the supergalactic centre, you know, may require us to um, adapt to things changing very quickly, um, you know, things reversing um, and coming out of left field is also possible. But it is also going to perhaps make us even more aware of the emptiness and the void that can also sort of sit within a black hole. And, you know, if you have the supergalactic center in a, in a strong alignment in your birth chart, you, you can go through life feeling that something is missing, that you're constantly trying to search for something or fill a gap or, you know, plug that gap, fill that void. There's kind of this kind of real emptiness and, and longing at a soul level, which 
you know, I speak from experience, Pluto is conjunct the supergalactic centre in my chart. So, you know, it can be really profound. It can be quite intense to work with this energy, but it pushes you forward. You know, you are never going to stop searching. And that is kind of what the supergalactic centre does. So in the square to the moon, again, squares are creating tension. It's like we have to really um, sit with the emptiness perhaps and the disconnection that we may feel and it is only by sitting with that and feeling into that that we can really start to understand it and acknowledge it and see it from what it is and what purpose is it serving and how can we start to sort of um, bring more balance into that and to address the feelings that we are working with. Um, the supergalactic centre also is very much a destroyer creator energy. So again, acknowledging that this again is part of the cycle of life and that things have to go, things have to be released, things have to die in order for the new to come in. And the moon fourth or fifth um, aspect, so the moon is obviously very galactically aligned in this chart, um, is sextile the Shapley attractor, which is another cosmic point which is aligned with truth. Truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So masks fall, veils fall, we can see around corners, we can see exactly what is going on when the Shapley attractor is activated. And because this is a sextile, you know, this isn't something that is necessarily just going to be like, ta-da, here we go. You know, we have to work for this. It isn't being handed to us on a plate, but the opportunity is there if we are willing to really look at it and feel into it. So Mercury is opposing a sign Alathfar in the Lyra constellation. Mercury is all about our mind and our message and our communication, information and so on. And Alathfar is one of the stars which is linked to our galactic human history. So, you know, there may be information coming through at this point or over the next month or so about where we come from and where we fit into the world and who we really are. But Alifar also brings a connection with sound healing, with music and Again, this, this theme of the cycle of life and the acceptance that everything is a cycle. So, you know, this is a re definitely a recurring theme for this full moon. Now, Neptune is conjunct in the Pegasus constellation. Neptune is also in a square to Be um, Betelgeuse in the Orion constellation, which we've already talked about. Um, so again, Shiat in Pegasus is really helping us to spread our wings, to take flight, to claim our freedom, to fly high, to see the bigger picture, to really start to recognise that we are multidimensional. You know, um, this star is about time travel. It's about moving between dimensions. It is about, you know, being able to go further than we ever thought is possible. And through Neptune, it is helping us to really take a vision of where we're going and where we want to go and bring that to life and sort of, you know, bring that in, which again, the full moon in Capricorn is really helping us with that as well. And the square to the Orion, Betelgeuse, is very much about sort of supporting us to start to dissolve the polarity, to step into more unity consciousness, to have more compassion for everything and everyone around us, and also to have trust and faith in the process which again, you know, I talked about at the beginning with Capricorn, there is such strong trust and faith in this full moon and this kind of real sort of feeling that, you know, we just have to keep going and we're not so far away now, but, you know, keep going, don't give up is really strong in this full moon. And you know, I talked about Saturn earlier. Saturn is um, squaring Rigel and Bellatrix in the Orion constellation. So again, you know, I talked about this in the Orion Stargate video that I did. But again, this is starting to dissolve lots of scenarios and situations where perhaps we've allowed our minds to control the show, where we might have allowed ourselves to be manipulated or controlled or coerced or repressed in some way. So again, you know, information is coming through, but also where we've been held by our minds and restricted in our way of thinking. Again, this is starting to dissolve with these square aspects. So a lot at this time is being transmuted and cleared and it is very karmic work because it links back to our Orion um, sort of history and galactic history. The final 
point just to make as well is that Uranus is getting very close to Algol now. And again, I've talked about this um, conjunction in previous videos. But, you know, this is quite a volatile, quite an erratic and quite a dramatic aspect conjunction that is going to come into exactitude next month. So it will be very active around the next full moon. But, you know, this is bringing up themes of um, good versus evil, goddess versus monster. There's a strong association with Medusa, with serpent energy, with transformation, shedding layers, um, you know, having the courage to face your fear, our deepest fear, look it straight in the eye. And in addition to the Algol conjunction, there's also an approaching square with Alphard in the Hydra constellation, which again is very much about serpent energy, releasing, shedding, claiming our divine feminine power and the divine feminine way that has been repressed and suppressed and shut down for so long. This is very much coming up to the forefront now. It needs to be seen. It needs to be recognised. It needs to be integrated. And Alphard really is um, associated with Kundalini energy and Kundalini activation. So again, with the square, it is about releasing power that has been locked in through your Uranus and Taurus. You know, power that has been locked in our bodies, in the earth, is ready to be released. And Alphard is going to help, along with Algol, is going to help release that. And, you know, it could be quite dramatic, but it's certainly very exciting and is absolutely what needs to happen. So we need to trust this process. So this video has been perhaps slightly longer than I would normally do. So if you've got this far, thank you for watching. Um, again, you know, there's so much more I could say. There's so many more alignments and aspects and energies. But again, you know, I don't want to overwhelm you too much. Um, but, you know, please feel free to comment, share your thoughts, share the video, you know, let me know what you think. Let me know how you're navigating um, the energy of this week. Let me know if you resonate with what I'm sharing and you, you can find out about my work. I'm on spiralbright.co.uk. I also have a Facebook page and an Instagram page. So find me there as well. And um, yeah, I think the message really is, you know, we are doing so well. So it's a time to really stop and just actually congratulate yourself for how far you've come and to really, um, you know, take a point to stop and recognize that. But also, you know, don't give up. Not yet, because, you know, although we have come really far, there is just that little bit further to go. And, you know, this is part of the process but it's an important process. Um, but we have got a huge amount of support for us in this process. So um, yeah, thank you for watching and I will be back very soon.